What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So I will be making schedule predictions for every single Power 5 team in college football for this upcoming season. And I will also do a subsequent conference standings video just once I finish up every team in a specific conference. Just as a synopsis of all my schedule predictions, I'll probably do those closer to the start of the season um, after I finish up all of these individual ones and all that. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into the Vanderbilt Commodore schedule predictions for 2022. And just some quick thoughts on the Vanderbilt program as a whole heading into next season. And really, there just isn't much to say here. They just aren't in a good spot as a football program right now. They are by far the least talented roster in their conference. Their coaching staff is unproven in a lot of ways. And year one under Clark Lee was not very inspiring either. They have question marks at most positions on the roster. And they play one of the more difficult schedules out there every year. Things just really aren't set up for them to be very good. Um, and, and, and really, they're not going to be very good this year either, I don't think. And it's, it's just not a good spot for the program to be football-wise. Clark Lee, like I said, is in his second year as a head coach as Vandy went 2-10 and 10 last season. And so far, nothing he's done in the offseason has really inspired me to expect them to be much better record-wise. Now, I do expect the team will be noticeably better overall just in how they perform on the field. I don't think they're going to get absolutely skull drug as bad as they did last year in a lot of their games, but I don't think it means they're going to have a, a higher win number um, on the season than they did last year. I just don't see it being enough to really generate any real upsets or anything like that at this point. I just think it means that they'll probably not get blown out as much. Um, and so normally this is the time where I would talk about some guaranteed wins on the schedule for a team, but with Vandy, there just really are none. So let's go ahead and dive into week one, which is at Hawaii, and that is a very interesting situation to me because I think Vandy is a slightly better team than Hawaii, just ever so slightly. They're a more talented team than Hawaii, but being on the road for Hawaii makes things very interesting because that trip is not your typical road trip when you travel in Hawaii. Time zones get sort of weird. Everything is weird when you go to Hawaii. It doesn't work out for most teams that do it. And I don't think Vandy is better by enough to really make up for that. And it's not like they're going to have some huge home field advantage due to the fan base or anything, but it's just a weird game. Um, it's one that Vandy could very well win. It's very much a toss-up in my opinion. Like I said, I think Vandy's a little bit better than them. But I think Hawaii gets a big win to start off their season here, mainly just due to what it's like to travel in there, especially when you're an SEC team that's unfamiliar with that whole environment. Again, a game that Vandy could very well end up winning. I think they are a better team there, but one that I just, I think Hawaii ends up coming away with the win because of all of the weirdness surrounding that one. Next game on the schedule is Elon, and I know I said there aren't any real guaranteed wins because they're Vandy, and this one isn't guaranteed, but it's about as close as you can get. Elon is not in the same you know, class of, of Vandy as a program, and they're at home. I think Vandy gets a pretty big win here probably. Good to just get one under their belt as they start to head into some tougher games on the season. Uh, and so, yeah, Vandy, I think, definitely gets a win there week two. Week three is Wake Forest, and that one is also at home, and that is an interesting game to me because it is should be a, a good one to look at for SEC versus ACC top-to-bottom sort of things, whereas I think Wake Forest is going to be a very good team next year, especially in the ACC. I think they're a top-25 team in the nation. But they're not dramatically better than Vandy roster-wise either. So Vandy could give them a little bit of a run, especially at home. It's not a big home field advantage by any means, but it's still a trip that Wake Forest has to make. I think Wake still wins this game probably by two or more scores. But it's one where Vandy kind of has maybe an outside shot at getting an upset. Could be an interesting matchup. You know, who knows? Next up is at Northern Illinois, and this one is a very intriguing one to me because I think Vandy is better than Northern Illinois, but not dramatically better than Northern Illinois, and it's another sort of weird road trip to head up there, um, but one that is much less weird than the Hawaii one, in my opinion, the one that I think Vandy will, will be much more favorable in, and I think that they end up getting a solid win here. I think it's a game that could really kind of work out either way, but Vandy's the more talented team. They should be favored. They should win this one, uh, so I think Vandy gets their second win of the season there on the road against Northern Illinois, and your next game up is at Alabama. 
I don't need to say much about this one. Vanderbilt has no shot against Alabama, especially on the road. They're just not in the same class as them um, roster-wise. They're just, they're just not. They're, they're, they're not going to win that game. Bama's probably going to beat them by four or five scores. Um, I just don't see things going very well for them in that one. Next game up is Ole Miss, and this one is also at home for Vandy, a game that will be closer than the Bama game, but Ole Miss is still dramatically better than them across the board, but not so much to where Vandy has no shot. I mean, Vandy could you know, give them a little bit of a run here and, and compete and hang around for a while. I don't think they're going to get a win in this game by any means, but it's a game where it could be interesting to see and you know, see how Vandy fights and performs in there. Could be an interesting one. Still got Ole Miss winning now. Next game up is at Georgia, and very similar to the Alabama game. There's just, Vandy's not going to come into Sanford Stadium and beat Georgia 9.9 times out of 10. Like, they're just not that, they're not in the same stratosphere as Georgia roster-wise. They're on the road. They don't have much of a shot. I'm pretty sure Georgia beat them by almost 60 last year. They're not going to beat Georgia here. I don't think they're going to lose by 60. You know, maybe they lose by 30, but they're not they're not going to compete very much in that one. Next game up is at Missouri. Game similar to Ole Miss, where they're better than Vandy by a noticeable margin, but not like a Georgia or an Alabama where they have no hope. They could maybe get an upset here as well. I'm not too terribly high on Missouri next year, but I think Missouri is better than them across the board. They're also at home, and as long as they don't just really take Vandy too lightly and not show up, then they'll probably get a a two or more score win in this one as well. Vandy is just, they're just not very good, um, you know, compared to the SEC level. Um, And so I think Missouri gets a win there as well. Next team up is South Carolina. And it's just, it's another team that is better than them, but not so much better than them that it's completely unwinnable. But they're still noticeably better than, than Vandy. Vandy doesn't have much hope in this one either. They could compete and hang around for a while. South Carolina still probably wins by three scores. Um, So, yeah, just another tough loss for Vanderbilt. I know this is a somewhat boring schedule prediction because most of these are going the same way, but that's just kind of the life of a Vanderbilt fan and, and program at this point. They're just not on the same competitive level as the rest of the SEC in football. Next team up is at Kentucky and one where Kentucky is noticeably better than them. I don't see Vanderbilt making much of a push in this one. They they hang around for a little while, fight hard, still probably going to lose by three or more scores. They're on the road as well. I just, again, I don't see much hope for them in this one either. Next team up is Florida, and it's more of the same. It's Florida is much better than them. Now, Florida is in year one under their new head coach, so maybe some things could go off the rails here, and you could maybe see an upset happening. I doubt it. I really doubt it. I mean, it would take something pretty catastrophic uh, for Florida to lose this game. Um, So, yeah. One, again, Vandy's probably not going to be completely hopeless in like they would against Georgia and Bama, but they don't have much of a hope in this one either. Probably going to lose this one by three or more scores as well. And then they end the year with Tennessee, who I think is going to be very, very good this upcoming year. And so... In some years recently, when Tennessee was at their lowest, Vandy maybe had a shot to steal a a win here at the end of the year. Um, But I think Vandy's much worse now than they were then. Um, And Clark Lee so far hasn't shown me anything that makes me think they're going to be much better. And Tennessee is much, much better now than they were then. So another one where I think Vandy probably won't get completely blown off the field, but they're not going to win. They're going to struggle to stay competitive in a lot of ways, I feel like. And, and it's going to be one where Tennessee probably wins by three or more scores. And so then that would make Vanderbilt 2-10 and ten on the year, which is the same as they were last year. And look, I'm sure all 15 of the Vanderbilt fans out there um, would like to see a better record from the team. But honestly, I just don't see them doing anything more than maybe 3-9 and nine or 4-8 and eight if they pull off a massive upset over a Wake Forest or somebody in the SEC. But even then, that's something that's just so unpredictable it would take near catastrophe for them to pull off a win like that. And so as almost predictable and, and almost sad as it is, I have to give Vanderbilt another 2-10 and ten season. Maybe, I mean, look, 3-9 and nine is very possible as well. They could very well beat Hawaii Week 1 and go 3-9. and nine. Um, and, and that would be 
better than 2-10, and 10, but still not very good for them. But if you look at the other games, I mean, Wake Forest or their other out-of-conference game, I think Wake Forest is a, a top 25 level team. I don't think Vanderbilt has much hope there. They're not beating Bama. They're not beating Georgia. Maybe they get an upset on an Ole Miss or Florida, maybe at Missouri or I don't know. I mean, they're just they're noticeably worse than every other team in their conference, and so it makes it very hard for them to have um, a good win, a good win total. So, you know, that'll do it for this one. Let me know down below in the comment section where you agree and or disagree with me on the Vandy schedule in 2022. Tell me what record you think they're going to have and who all they're going to lose to. You know, it's it's not looking great for them. It just it is what it is. Um, but if you've made it this far in the video, be sure to go ahead and leave a like because it helps out the channel tremendously and subscribe for more college football content in the future. I have just, this is the last video for the SEC, so I'm going to be moving on to new conferences very soon. And there will be a lot more content coming out around the schedule prediction stuff and, and other college football stuff in the future. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.